Welcome to WellsCountyVoice.com. The boys are on the floor. We'll get set for game number two. Girls, Lady Tigers fell 45-41. As the boys get started, boys come in four and six. South Adams three and six. Coach Benedict in year number two. He's got 381 wins in 26 years of head coaching experience. South Adams has a first-year coach in Trent Lehman. He's three and six. He's got seven years of head coaching experience, 79 and 63 overall. Bluffton is ranked 79th in Class 2A. Sagarin rating of 52.74. South Adams is 52.16. They're 84th in Class and 81st in Class 2A. Bluffton lost a heartbreaker to Woodland, 52-51 in a last-second three-point shot. They were up by 16 in that fourth quarter. South Adams lost to Delta 67-41 versus Common Foes. Both teams are 0-1. I think it's Delta is the Common Foe. Strict the schedule looks like this. Bluffton's opponents are 46-51. and 51. South Adams' opponents are 42-33. and 33. Over the last 30 years, Bluffton has 25 wins to 19 losses. Last meeting was the South Adams 3.1, 56-53. Prediction tonight, according to Sagarin, is the Starfires by a three ball, 50 to 47. Tigers coming off again, a tough loss to Woodland. Let's hope we don't have to relive anything yeah, like that boy, again. Yeah, boy, we don't want to relive yeah. that game. Uh, Tigers were up by 16. I think, what, what did we uh, figure? They 18 points scored in the last yeah. four minutes mm -hmm. by the Woodland Warriors. They had scored eight. Nine points, count it, nine points in the second and yeah. third quarter combined. They put up 18 in the last mm -hmm. four minutes of the game. Uh, and the Tigers, again, lose a heartbreaker, 52-51. See if they bounce back tonight. Let's look at Starfire's schedule so far. Their wins have come at the hands of Bluffton. Fort Recovery and Union City. Losses to Daleville, Wapahani, Heritage. Thank you, Marcus. Yep. Parkway, Belmont, and Delta. Yeah, no problem. And Coach Corral has made his way up. Boy, Coach, uh, that was a heartbreaker. Um, I, I, I just want to say this. I, our girls played so hard. They just made two more plays than we did. Yep. And we were right there. We had a one-point lead with under three minutes to go. I think it was two and a half maybe. Uh, and just couldn't hang on. And, um, you know, we didn't have Alyssa Burchett tonight. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm – I'm proud of our girls. Uh, I, I, w I would be remiss to say, though, I'm, I feel like we could have won the game, and we just didn't. Yeah, there was, there was a number of chances you felt like, okay, this is the moment that, that we can kind of break through. I, I know one of the – Emmy was at the line. She missed her second. Olivia got the rebound. I think maybe we were down three at that yep. point in time. Yep. That's right. She's got one and one. You're thinking, boy, if you can get yep. one or two here, she misses the front end. And I think South yep. Adams went down and converted on that next possession. Yeah. Uh, and then we got the out of bounds play, and the Dellinger girl picked up the foul. We got the ball back. Yep. We didn't get. We didn't get a good. We, I don't know that we scored in the last two minutes. Um, we just didn't execute and make plays at the end when we needed to. And and unfortunately, we've been doing that. I mean, we've been doing that all year long. We've been making plays, and tonight we just didn't make those plays. And give give South Adams credit. I mean, that's a really good team. Uh, and uh, you know, we hung right in there with them. And, um, you know, we just we just came up short. Hey, Coach, I, I thought you did a great job subbing your girls out. I mean, your bigs got in early foul trouble. Uh, I thought you did a really nice job kind of keeping keeping the girls close, keeping your bigs in the game as, as long as you could. And certainly without Alyssa, I mean, that, that yeah. shortens yeah. the bench up considerably yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, I guess one thing is Marcus and I were talking, and I, I wanted to throw, throw this at you. Grace never seemed to get all that involved offensively tonight, and and why do you think that is? I mean, I, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, she's had about three or four games in a row here where she's just 
not yeah. scoring. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, honestly, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's confidence. I don't know if it's um, looking to score more. Uh, I'm not sure. So we're going to have to get that figured out because if she plays the way she's capable of playing, um, you know, it's a. I think it's a different outcome. Yeah, yeah and I know one thing, Mark. And I don't. I don't. And, I, and again, I, I want to say this. I, I'm not laying it at the feet of Grace. Sure, this is sure. Certainly not Grace's fault. Um, but I think that she's capable of doing more offensively, and we just got to find a way to help her do that. I, I think one of the manifestations of that tonight is the Dellinger girl. I don't know that we really forced her to work all that hard defensively tonight. And, you know, I'm thinking if Grace is more aggressive with the basketball, maybe she's got to work a little more harder sure. to, uh, defensively. Sure. And I don't know, it just kind of it just kind of felt like the offense was kind of weird, you know, right. without seeing Grace as involved as we've seen her before. Correct. And, again, I'm not laying it at Grace's feet either. Right. It was right. just kind of, I don't know, it just kind of felt a little awkward. Right. I, You know, I'm – if I had an answer for it, I would have fixed it, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, we tried to get her some shots, tried to get her some looks, and um, there's either play broke down or maybe she missed a shot or I'm not sure. So, um, and then, but we let's on the bright side of it, uh, Emmy Boots was oh, super Emmy aggressive was tonight. Super. Um, Olivia King was super aggressive yeah, tonight. Olivia was super tonight. I, um, I agree. And so, you know, that aggressiveness kind of made up for some of the mm -hmm. lack of offense we had from some other people. So, and you, you look know, at Emmy's line tonight i think she finished with 20 mm -hmm. and i i recall two or three or maybe even four shots just fell off the rim i mean she could have easily had another six or eight points yeah. if the ball rolls the other way sure and i agree with that um you know uh you give her credit she fought hard so did so did olivia all of our girls fought hard mm -hmm. i mean it wasn't anybody who didn't I, I i grace played her brains out um i think I think uh, all of our girls played their brains out. Uh, Jamie and AP had a hard time down low with their bigs. Mm -hmm. um, but I do felt like they play. you know, everybody played hard. We've just got to figure out how to do the little things when it, the time counts, execute that, and make a winning play. Mm -hmm. Whether that's on the offensive end, the defensive end, the free throw line, wherever it may be. And those little things matter. And those little things turn into big things. And, yep. you know, it's a four-point game, and mm -hmm. easily we could have, I mean, we could have won the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but again, I, I want to give credit to South Adams. Uh, Coach Freeman does a great job with his team. That's an outstanding team. Um, you know, they're good. So, you know, we had a hard time, and we, we hopefully will get one more shot at them in the sectional. And, and can I ask about Alyssa? I mean, how, how yeah, is Alyssa's she? Yeah, got Alyssa's got an injury right now. Um, I don't know how long she'll keep her out. We're going to evaluate it here the next couple days. Happened at the Jay County game. And she's kind of day to day right now, so we're just gonna, we're not really sure where she's at. So um, hopefully we can get her back soon. All right, coach. Thanks for stopping up. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. All right, boys, coming up here in just about 30 seconds, we'll get this second game started of our doubleheader tonight. Well, not a lot of time to talk about the boys. I don't yeah. even know who the starters are, so <laughs> we'll learn who the starters are. Um, as they get introduced tonight, that's kind of how this rolls when we get into back-to-back -back games. Uh, but any any final thoughts after listening to the coach, Marcus? Um, one question I wanted to ask him, but we didn't have enough time. I, I'm just curious where we go with Emmy Boots at this point. I think she played a tremendous game, and I think she's just, I don't know, a couple, um, I don't know, a couple little things that she needs to work on, like feet work, like I kind of mentioned earlier, away from getting a player of the week maybe. Um, she she was that good tonight, and I think if she can just do the little things, then she could easily yeah. score 20 points a game multiple times. Well, again, you go back to those shots that just fall off the rim, yeah. and there was a couple other shots where had she gather herself yeah, a little exactly. bit more, yep. there would be another yeah, four exactly. or six yep. points kind of laying mm -hmm. out there. I mean, you could have easily seen a more mature Emmy yeah. is a 30-point night today. Yeah. I agree. And she was very mature. I think she, she stepped to the line, knocked down our free throws. Oh, yeah, but I'm not taking confidence. anything away. Yeah, exactly. You're still yep. talking about a freshman yeah, out there, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Another year, she's putting up 30 yeah, tonight. I agree. I agree. She's she's that good. All right. We're going we're gonna to try to figure out who the starters are. <laughs> Ours are the same, I believe. So. All right. Victor Vasquez. Greg Best, Grant Besser, 
Cody Fike. Lars Intergrun. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I didn't have time to get pronunciations either, so. Uh, not much time to practice before the game. We're <laughs> no. throwing ourselves right into the mix of it. Well, they got, they got a little hype out here, too. Yeah. Thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, twenty-two, and forty-two. James Arnold. All right. Gavin King will be jumping for the Tigers. Opening tip handled by South Adams. Forty-two. Arnold will handle up top. Thirty-two is Fike. Great and job by Everett. Everett. Johnson gets his hand yep. on the ball. It'll stay white basketball. <laughs> Vasquez hands off to Arnold. Thirty-three is Besser. 34 is Integron. Nice Turn around, little nice hook. little yeah. sky hook by nice. Fike. That was pretty. Yep. Two nothing South Adams. Bumgarner. Everett Johnson back to Bumgarner. Over to Max Coral. One minute gone here in the first. Coral drives, kind of bumped off. Johnson with the board. Great effort there. Out of bounds to be South Adams basketball. And again, Arnold will walk it up. Just under seven to go here in the first. Uh -oh. Loose ball picked up by Vasquez. Finds Intergrown inside. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm trying to get the pronunciation of Lars' last name, right? So he makes the bucket, and the PA announcer just goes, Lars. <laughs> like, a lot of help. I think Max should have slipped that screen there. Arnold crosses the timeline, six minutes to go, two minutes down here in the first. Good job. Irwin with the steal. Hey, I was pronouncing it right, right. Intergrown, right? Intergrown's. Coral in the corner, back up top to Bumgarner. Tiger still looking for the first bucket tonight. Back to the corner. Now let's see if... Evan can take it to the lane this game and kind of finish at the rack. King, back to Irwin. I'm liking the patience by the Tigers. Coral so gets inside, a little bit short, gets it back, goes into the corner. Irwin for three, got nice it. Shot. Jonathan Irwin for three. Good second effort there by Max. Kicked it to the right guy. For the most part, we know the result of that shot. First bucket for the Tigers, 4-3. Outside three by Besser, answers back. Bum Garner and Irwin. He'll go outside, Coral will launch a three, uh. rims out. Vasquez in front of the Tigers bench. We'll get down to Intergrown, up and in. 
And Coach isn't happy because he didn't see any help defense on that. That's a big matchup for Everett. He wanted to see a little help defense on that play. Timeout, Tigers. We'll take a break. A new adventure awaits. Above the clouds, beneath the waves, among the rocks, powered by the light around us, each moment of time is precious. Go higher, deeper, further. Pursue your dreams. Powered by light, any light never needs a battery. Citizen Promaster, go beyond. Daniels Jewelers, North Main Street, Bluffton, where personal attention and trust become part of the memory. 9-3, back to live action. King gets inside. Oh, kind of threw that up and go. got it to go down. Quick finish there. Nine five. Arnold gives up the Besser. Back to Arnold under four. South Adams up by four. South Adams being patient. Tigers try to double up. Good Arnold. defense there. Good defense. Nice. Good job by Gavin. Another example of that long oh, reach yeah. by Gavin King. Riley Johnston getting set to check in for Bluffton. Nice pass. Good feed down low, and Johnson's going to be fouled. Oh. Almost got that one to go. Did they call that on the floor? Wow, they did. It's a groan with the foul. His first, team's first, game's first. Max back to Evan Bumgarner. Three minutes, three minutes to go in the first. Irwin for three, got it. Jonathan Irwin, a couple of three balls early. Nice pass in there by the Tigers. Tigers have pulled within one. We've known all season he doesn't need much space to knock it down. Good job by Jonathan Irwin. That's a better, that's a better rotation there for the Tigers. It's a lot better rotation. Fight can't get it to go. Tigers back the other direction. We're on the seesaw, 9-8, Starfires, Tigers can take a lead. From Garner to Johnson, Everett, baseline drive goes into the corner, they'll rotate around. Good drive by yeah, Evan, there got it is, there it is. And the harm. Well, I'll tell you what, I think we talked about this on the drive up. Will we see yeah, Evan exactly. attack the rim tonight? Exactly. And that's a perfect example of it. And I love it. He gets it at the top of the key, rips it through, and gets it to his left hand, and he makes the air one. The second on Lars. <laughs> I like the way he said that one. And Evan Good job. drops the free throw down. Left it up by two. Two minutes, two minutes to go in the first. Number 55, Clark has checked in. Number 20, Musselman has checked in. On the floor for the Tigers, Irwin, Bumgarner, Johnston, Johnson, and Coral. Good jump shot there. Mike's got four. Let's see if he takes more of that shot here tonight. We're knotted up at 11. Elbow, two by Irwin's off. Back the other direction. Clark dumps it down low to fight. Arnold gets to the rack. 
South Adams back up by two. Marcus, I want to I want you to look at the defensive matchup on Evan. Uh -huh. Irwin fires a long three, short. Now, I think he takes him. Oh, I agree. Yep, I definitely agree. I think he needs to pull it back out, get it to the top of the key, and go directly at him. Johnston inside, three-second call. Wow. That's too bad. That was a good. Yeah, it was. That was a good take by Riley. Good take by Max. I think they got Riley with a three second there. But yeah, I definitely agree. I think I think he should go directly at him. See if South Adams opts to run the quarter out. Clark throws it away. Tigers have got 20 seconds to work with. Tigers with a chance to close the quarter. Yep, I think he stays right there until about the end of the quarter. Not even sure he gives up the ball. Yeah, he's Everett. calling for it. Go right at him. Uh. Johnston will fire a three. No. And that is going to end the first quarter. 13-11 Starfires at the end of one. We'll be back. Bluffton Roofing Incorporated prides themselves on developing a long-term relationship with their customers, listening to their needs, and suggesting the proper course of action, be it preventative maintenance, repair, or replacement. Bluffton Roofing and owner James Worth are GAF certified and are certified weather stopper roofing contractors. Bluffton Roofing is fully insured, protecting you and your home. Call 824-3564 or 307-6313. Bluffton Roofing Incorporated, quality First, home improvements. Reed's Do It Best Hardware and Gift Shop is so much more than a hardware store. They have a newly expanded housewares department. They carry Melissa and Doug toys, Yankee candles, and Willow Tree collectibles. Think of Reed's Gift Shop year-round for baby gifts, birthday, anniversary, showers, and for those everyday items you need to pick up. Men, you can get your hardware supplies and a gift for the woman in your life all in one stop. Reed's Do It Best Hardware and Gift Shop, open seven days a week on Highway 1 North in Bluffton. We appreciate your business. Welcome back to WellsCountyVoice.com. Scott Menser, Mar Marcus Morgan on the call. So, Marcus, what's a Starfire? What's a Starfire? Wow, great question. A Starfire. Okay, I have no idea. I was gonna <laughs> say something. All right, so you're stumped. Yeah, I am stumped. Okay, just checking. <laughs> Outside three by Irwin is gonna be off the mark. Everett Johnson with the offensive board will throw it away. I think Jonathan settling and it's kind of hurting the team at this point. Being down by two, they need to work it. A nice little drive. Musselman with the bucket. Four point lead for South Adams. Ever Johnson. His first points tonight. He's so good at ripping through and getting as close to the backboard as he possibly can and laying it in. Tigers with a little backcourt pressure. Ah. Gavin King will check in for Max Coral. So on the floor for the Tigers, it's Irwin, Johnson, Johnston, Bumgardner, and King. I'm glad that, le that ref is super loud. <laughs> Very uh, assertive whenever he calls that. Marcus, you missed Gavin King in my book. I did. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Good take there by Gavin.
6.30 to go. That's it, that's it, yep. nice. Way to come out aggressive. Evan's done a great job so far. Musselman oh. misses the lay-in. Six minutes to go here in the second, 15-15. Tigers with a chance to take a lead. Riley. Good nice. Move. Good move. Bluffton up by two, 537 to go. Number 12, Newman in the game. Fike from outside. And a held ball. And I think the Tigers are willing to give Fike that jump shot there. Yeah, he's no, little, I agree. He's a little attentive with it, but I think they're willing to give it to him. Ah, oh, Riley. Nice Good hands job. by Irwin. Yep. Bluffton holding two, five minute mark here in the second. Four fifty to go. Gavin. The Mac or Evan nice dumps it dump down. Off. That's a good dump off there. Bike a little bit too tall for Riley Johnston. This is Clark. Newman. Long three. Good offensive board or defensive board by Evan Bumgarner. Yep. Something he's done great all season. Yeah, he really has. Starters will come back out on the floor, or some of the starters will come back out on the floor for South Adams. Right now, foul situation. Starfires with four, Tigers with one. We're halfway through the second. Irwin, a little pull up in the lane. I think that might have got tipped. Yep. Tigers kind of made a run with some of the second troops in. See if they can hold off the first teamers. Good block by Johnston. Held ball, possession arrow will go to Bluffton. Three thirty-nine left. Bluffton holding two. Gives it up to Bumgarner. Evan. Johnston. Baseline drive by King. Throws it in the corner. They rotate around. Wide open look for Irwin. Good and he nails movement. it. Good ball movement there. It started with Gavin's penetration there on the baseline. Nice defense. Nice backcourt defense. Irwin now with nine. Three three balls. Yep. Some very aggressive backcourt pressure for the Tigers. Fike in for Clark. This is the starting five now for South Adams. 
under three minutes to go. Johnston, turn around, drains nice it. Job. Nice job by Riley. It's a good look for him. Yep. Vasquez. Arnold gets inside. I thought he got pushed earlier, but he'll go to the line and shoot two. Only the second foul for Bluffton. Arnold has two tonight, first trip to the line. It's good. Can cut it to five here. He does. Second is good. 22-17. Backward pressure being applied by South Adams, and the Tigers will break. Baumgartner gets beyond Vasquez, throws it outside. Irwin launches another three. It's off, one and done, and King's going to pick up a foul in the backcourt. It's a second on Gavin, third on Bluffton. Ever Johnson getting set to check in. 2.15 left here in the second. Arnold picks up his dribble, needs some help. Good job by Max. Good hands by the Tiger defense. Irwin got a finger on it. Two minutes, two minutes to go. Garner finds a cutting Irwin, goes back to Evan. Johnson will hold at 135. Gavin gets into the paint, kicks it out. Loving the patience for the Tigers. If it's broke, don't force it. Just keep moving it. 1.13 to go. Riley finds a cutting yes. Irwin. Good job. You eventually put the defense to sleep. You moving the ball so well and just kind of taking care of it and being patient. That's what happens there. And a traveling call. We'll get it back to Bluffton. And I'm looking over at the bench, and if you get Coach Pribble off the bench and cheering, that's a good sign because <laughs> he's a hard nose. He wants you to take care of it and pass it around, and that's what the Tigers are doing. 45 seconds to go. See if the Tigers can close out the quarter. Nope, they'll fire a three, and Riley Johnston drains the three. Riley's having a nice oh, yeah, first yeah, half. Right. Great job. There's a steal for him. Just slow it up. You want the last shot here. Tigers double-digit lead here. No need to dribble if he's Bump not going to fly pressure. with 15. He'll put it on the floor at 10. Yep. I like that. Oh, <laughs> oh he had the, oh, yeah, he the hoop, and he knew it. Yes, he did. Timeout, South Adams. Well, interesting timeout with five and a half seconds left to go in the half. We'll take a break. At Pizza Hut, our original pan dough rises fresh every day, making it crispy on the outside, soft and chewy on the inside. And now you can get our original pan as part of the $6.99 any deal. That's two medium pizzas with any toppings, any crust, any specialty for just $6.99 each, only at Pizza Hut. Get the $6.99 any deal at your local Pizza Hut on North Main Street in Bluffton. Welcome back to WellsCountyVoice.com. 5.5 seconds to go in the half. Bluffton 
up by 10. Four points for South Adams here in the second. Get it in the Arnold. And at the end of the first half, a great second quarter for the Bluffton Tigers. Yeah. Up by 10, 27 17. We'll take a timeout, crunch some stats, be back with your halftime report here in just a minute. WellsCountyVoice.com. Scott Mentzer, Marcus Morgan, on your call. A new adventure awaits. Above the clouds, beneath the waves, among the rocks, powered by the light around us, each moment of time is precious. Go higher, deeper, Further, pursue your dreams. Powered by light, any light never needs a battery. Citizen Promaster, go beyond. Daniels Jewelers, North Main Street, Bluffton, where personal attention and trust become part of the memory. At Pizza Hut, our original pan dough rises fresh every day, making it crispy on the outside, soft and chewy on the inside. And now you can get our original pan as part of the $6.99 any deal. That's two medium pizzas with any toppings, any crust, any specialty for just $6.99 each. Only at Pizza Hut. Get the $6.99 any deal at your local Pizza Hut on North Main Street in Bluffton. Welcome to the new Heidi Automotive Group. We have a brand new state-of-the-art facility. Now you can shop for a new Chevrolet, Buick, Dodge, Ram, Jeep, or Chrysler at the same location right here in Bluffton, Indiana. We have a huge selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, vans, and crossovers. We focus on quality, and that is why we certify our pre-owned inventory so you get more warranty, free maintenance, and peace of mind. Don't worry about your credit. We have financing options for everyone. Heidi Automotive Group, a new look, but old-fashioned integrity. Welcome back to WellsCountyVoice.com. I am off by a point here. What am I missing? All right. I got to go find my point. I take a break. Yeah, they bring we'll the right ball back. down across the timeline. Wingman is open. He dribbles around, finds an open man in the corner, jumps, shoots, scores. Hi, Tim Steffen, Steffen Financial Group. Wish your retirement was as easy as jump, shoot, score. Come to see us at our office at 110 West Cherry Street or call us, please, at 824-8175. Let us work for you to reach your financial goals. Jump, shoot, score. Let us help you with that. Stefan Financial Group, 824-8175, 110 West Cherry Street, Bluffton, Indiana. Securities offered through Thurston Springer Financial, member FINRA and SIPC. Some insurance products also offered through Thurston Springer. Tim Stefan is a registered associate of Thurston Springer and is doing business as Stefan Financial Group. Stefan Financial Group is independent of Thurston Springer. Are you looking for a job or know of someone who is? Peyton's Northern, a Kroger company, is now hiring. At Peyton's, you'll get a job with career advancement opportunities, employee discounts, tuition reimbursement, and educational assistance. A successful applicant will need to be 18 years of age, have the ability to work weekends, holidays, and overtime, can operate motorized equipment, complete strength and endurance testing, pass a pre-employment and background screens, work 10-hour shifts, and lift 55 pounds. At Payton's, we offer matching 401k retirement savings, paid incentive days, personal and vacation days, and you'll receive Kroger benefits after 60 days. All qualified applicants are encouraged to apply for this opportunity online at jobs.kroger.com. 
click on Logistics and Distribution Jobs and search for Bluffton. For questions, call Peyton Staffing Center at 260-827-2108 or 2109. That's jobs.kroger.com, 260-827-2108. Peyton's Northern, now hiring. Every team knows that the three-point play can be a winning move. That's why State Farm and me, Kevin Beatty, and my team are here to help you go for three by combining your home, auto, and life insurance. It's a great call that saves you time and money. So go for the win and score savings by combining your home, auto, and life. It's just another way we're here to help things go right. So call me, State Farm Agent Kevin Beatty, at 824-1928 or in Burn at 589-2077. All right, welcome back. I've found my missing two points. Feel much better about myself. All right, here's your halftime stats. Four South Adams. Musselman with two. Besser with three. Fike with four. Lars with four. Arnold with four. 13 in the first, four in the second, 17 at half for South Adams for the Tigers. Everett Johnson with two. Gavin King with two. Evan Bumgardner with five. Riley Johnson with seven, all in the second quarter and leading the way for the Tigers. Jonathan Irwin with 11. Three threes and one two. Johnston with 11. Tigers 11 in the first, 15 in the, or 16 in the second. 27 and a half, up by 10 as we head to the third and I even hate to even say this Mar Marcus we we held him to four we're up by ten well deja vu you get uh, yeah you know I'm, I'm feeling a little <laughs> well I mean I think the important thing well the biggest difference is from tonight and um, Friday night is I think they're refocused now. I think their defensive effort is something that I don't think I've seen last week. I think it was just purely offense and they played so well offensively, but I think today it's kind of a balanced effort in offense and defense. So I think I don't know if we keep it at a 10 point lead, but I think if we can continue to do the right things and continue to take care of the ball like we have been and uh, kind of execute down the stretch, then I don't want to speak too soon, but let's hope. I'm, I'm gun shy to say too much after after yeah. <laughs> the last game. Up by 10. Um, Jonathan Irwin with 11. Mm -hmm. And the thing about Jonathan, we've seen so many games where he hits a couple early threes. Yeah. And then he kind of fades away a yeah. little bit. You know, he starts rushing some shots, maybe taking some shots too early. Mm -hmm. Um and it's just, you know, if we can get a consistent Irwin yeah, yeah. production quarter after quarter, it makes such a big difference. We mm -hmm. saw that, I think, in the Winchester yeah. game where we really shot well yeah. all game and kind of paced the Tigers. Riley Johnston, yeah. really nice, mm -hmm. second quarter, nice second quarter. Coming off the bench, putting down seven in the second quarter, including a big three ball. Evan having a good first yeah. half. Mm -hmm. A um, couple times now we've seen him kind of penetrate, get close to the rim, sees an, an open three and gives up yep. what I think is a good two, mm -hmm. hoping for a better three. I think I just want him to take the exactly. two. Exactly, yeah. I've said, yeah, we both said that all season long. But tonight he's kind of made the right pass. And sometimes he'd make a pass throughout the season where he's just putting himself or the ball farther away from the basket, and it's not really making a difference either in that possession. But I think now he's making the right pass, kicking it out to Jonathan Irwin for the open um, three-pointer or um, kicking it out to Gavin so he can drive baseline and kick it to the next player. I think he's making the right pass, not just the pass. Ten-point lead. Tigers look to be in control. Really no foul trouble right now. King's got two. Irwin's got one. Those are the only fouls I've got right now for the Tigers. 
Uh, really nobody in foul trouble for South Adams either. So Tigers looking to be in good shape as we head to the third. Again, if you missed the girls game earlier, the Lady Tigers fell by four, 45-41. It was a pretty, a pretty, you know, well fought, yeah. kind of back and forth, interesting game. Emmy Boots with a huge game for the Tigers, finishes with 20. Freshman gets the start, and again, I don't remember many times she left the floor. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm not sure she left the floor at all. Yeah, I, I really don't think she did. Mm -hmm. She's that important of a player to that um, Lady Tigers team. So if that's playing all 40 minutes or whatever, then that's what she's going to have to do. But like you said, it's just a heartbreaking loss for them, but hard fought game for both teams. And coach came up and talked to us, and I think rightfully so. He was yeah. proud of the effort of the girls, and they did. They had great effort. Um, just a few shots didn't go their oh, way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we open up the third. South Adams will open up with the basketball. A quick three by James Arnold. He now has seven. It's a good way to start if you're the Starfires. Quickly cuts the lead to seven. See if the Tigers can answer back. Irwin outside an open three for Bumgarner. Short. Fighting for the ball. Yep. And held ball will favor Bluffton. They throw it up top to Johnson. Max. And I get called for the charge. Max not in the book yet. No. Nope. Benedict has some questions for the refs. I'm not quite sure what the discussion is. Okay, well, whatever it, is, whatever it is, we're back to live basketball. And we're glad they got to figure it out. So. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what they had to figure out, but. Oh, that's not good defense there. Lars. <laughs> he kind of got behind them. Can't do that. First five points scored by South Adams. Good pump fake there. Back come the Starfires. Just under seven, we're a minute into the third. 5-0 run by South Adams. Arnold picks up his dribble. This is Besser. Gives it back to Arnold, they'll reset. Fike, cross court Vasquez. And if you're the Tigers, you gotta apply more pressure to those Starfire players who are dribbling, picking up their ball away from the basket. You have to get into them and take away their passing vision. Offensive rebound by Fike and Starfires will set up again with six minutes. And outside three by Arnold. It is an 8-0 run. Yep. Lead down to two. We'll be back. Tiger timeout. At Corrective Chiropractic, we offer individualized treatment plans for patients of all ages, from infants to elderly, and even during pregnancy. Have you ever experienced a workplace, sports, or auto accident, or just keep suffering from chronic pain? Corrective Chiropractic can help. 
knee, neck, shoulder or back pain, headaches, migraines, allergies, muscular tension, Corrective Chiropractic can help. I'm Dr. Josh Bell from Corrective Chiropractic, serving Bluffton, Yoder, Decatur, Burn, Montpelier, and the surrounding area to help you feel and function better. Schedule your appointment today at 260-353-1400 and let Corrective Chiropractic help you along your journey to health and wellness. Corrective Chiropractic, 360 North Main Street, Suite A, Dutch Mill Plaza, Bluffton, Indiana. 8-0 run by South Adams. Lead is down to 2, 27-25, just under six minutes to go. We talked about deja vu. Eight points in two minutes. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> Hope the Tigers can get that changed around here. Tigers yet to score here in the third. Riley Johnston set to check back in. We're going to get a foul. It's going to be against Arnold. His first, team's first of the second half. Johnston in for King. Play. Good play. Max got a little bit too far underneath the basket. <laughs> Everett's not going to get out muscled, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we get it back, so. Throw it up top for Irwin. And traveling call. Turnover Bluffton. I didn't see who that one was on. So James Arnold, six in the quarter. 10 overall, he's got a couple threes. Nice pass, put a pass there. Just couldn't finish it. Five minutes. Coral back inside off the glass and good. Max is in the book. First points for in the third for Bluffton. Uh, oh. Here comes the Tigers. 4.30 on the clock. Holding four. Bob Garner picks up his dribble. From the elbow, Johnson, a little bit long. Good play by Max to get his hand on the basketball and keep it alive. And we'll get a South Adams foul. Arnold second. Johnston gives it back to Bumgardner. Everett with a little floater inside. Good take, a little bit long. Halfway through the third. Arnold gives it up to Besser. They'll go back down low. Fike. They're get getting it. caught reaching on defense. They're trying to get that post player from behind by smacking the ball away. They're going to call that one. Irwin's second, team's second. Outside three by Besser, that's good. Second three for Besser. We're on the seesaw, 29-28. 
Upland's got one field goal here in the third, an outside three by Coral. Besser and Arnold have been the scoring for South Adams here in the third. Five minutes gone in the quarter. Fike picks up his dribble to Vasquez. Outside three by Besser is long over the top of the backboard to be bluffed in basketball, 2.39 to go. Tigers came into the quarter up by 10. Lead has been cut to five. South Adams has gotten it down to one it's at one point in time. Erwin Vasquez on his. Him hands off to Bumgarner, Evans. Two thirteen left. Tigers by five. Oh, Vasquez. We'll get fouled by behind by Everett Johnson. And you know Everett's kind of kicking himself yeah. right now. Not many plays he makes like that, but at the same time, Scott, I think he spent too much time at the top of the key and not down low. He was kind of the distributor from up top, and I don't think that's a good, it's a good sign for the Tigers if he's doing that. Vasquez misses the first. We'll get one more. First foul for Everett and one for two. One possession basketball game. Gavin King, Gabe Eisenhut getting set to check in. That's, That's it. Oh, good offensive board by Everett. You can't get disappointed by that nope. not falling. And that's what I'm always afraid of with Evan, that he'll take it to the rim and not make the layup and then kind of gets non-aggressive after that. Johnston for three. Got it. Riley Johnston has been looking good. Ten for him. Six-point lead. One minute. One minute to go here in the third. And a travel. Great job. Eisenhut and King. And that started with Ever trying to deny the entry pass there. He kind of caught it and turned and moved his pivot foot. Gavin to Gabe Eisenhut. I think I'd try to close the quarter out here. I definitely agree there, Scott. I don't think there's any rush. And if they're not going to come up and take Evan yeah. on, I'd, I'd hold the ball, yeah. frankly. Evan at 12. Riley at 7. Eisenhut, oh, oh threw it yep. away. And at the end of the third, 35-29, Tigers holding six. We'll be back. Do you know 
a seventh grader looking for a fun place to spend time with friends? Are you looking for an environment where your teen is surrounded by positive role models? These days, your middle school student is probably very interactive, but is he or she active? Seventh grade is a time when sports become more competitive and provide less opportunity for the average child to be involved in physical activity. The YMCA wants to emphasize the value of a healthy lifestyle by offering a free Y membership to every seventh grader in Allen, Whitley, and Wells counties. It's the wise way of giving back to this community. Students thrive in a safe environment where they can grow in spirit, mind, and body. Get to your local Y and sign your 7th grader up for a free Y membership. It's that simple. Offer good for every 7th grader residing in Allen, Whitley, and Wells counties. For more information, stop by your local Y or visit fwymca.org or email here for you at fwymca.org. Welcome back to WellsCountyVoice.com. Fourth quarter action. Tigers up by six. Only two Tigers got scored in that third. Five points by Coral, three by Riley Johnston. Eight minutes left. Arnold with the drive to the rim. He's out of bounds. Off bluff, then it will stay with South Adams. Number 20 is Musselman. 12 is Newman. This is Clark. Oh, Rims yeah. out. Yep. The rebound there by Gavin. I think the matchups right now really favor Bluffton. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I just. Ugh. He's got to take his time there. Clark back to Arnold. One minute gone here in the fourth. Musselman trying to float it in for Fike. He gets away and lays it in. Fike has six. Lead is three. Eisenhut, back to Bumgarner. Gavin King, Tigers work it around the perimeter. Irwin and Johnson getting set to check back in at the next break. Well, Tiger's going to get bailed out here a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I agree. Not that they were having a bad possession there, just kind of Riley got a little sloppy trying to drive into the lane there. Johnson and Irwin back on the floor. Nice job. Max couldn't finish. Six minutes to go. Fike from the free throw line, no good. Long rebound, picked up by Newman. Gives it up to Musselman, 5.44 to go. Uh, I think he might have got away with one there. Musselman rims out. Fike with the offensive board and the putback. It's a two point game. 35-33. South Adams was down by 10 and a half. 
Tigers have not scored here in the fourth. Nice job by Everett Johnson. Four points for Everett. Big bucket. Yep. Arnold for three. Nice job by Clark to check it back down. He drains the three. Spencer Clark. One point game, we're on the seesaw. Irwin drive, got it. Jonathan Irwin's got 13. Timeout bluffed, and I think that's a good timeout. 30-second yeah. timeout, we'll be back. is your choice in northern indiana just like filling a medication prescription from your doctors you have the right to choose who provides your physical therapy and ipt accepts all insurance coverage with extended hours we are open 7 a.m to 7 p.m and offer same day appointments we have 17 conveniently located clinics with seven in fort wayne and one each in angola Auburn, Bluffton, Columbia City, Goshen, Huntington, Kendallville, New Haven, and Warsaw. Contact Indiana Physical Therapy to start your therapy today. We will get you back to work, play, and life. Celebrating 29 years in business, Indiana Physical Therapy is your choice for physical therapy. Call 260-209-2464 or visit indianapt.com. 4.13 to go. It's a three-point game, 39-36, coming out of the Bluffton timeout. Oh. And a turnover by South Adams. We're halfway through the fourth. See if the Tigers can execute down the stretch. Four minutes to go. They're up by three. two possessions Irwin's got really aggressive and driving it to the basket he got one to go on the coast to call a timeout and then he gets the foul there Jonathan's got 13 leads all bluffing scorers get in there. oh they're killing me Marcus <laughs> you're killing me They're still in control of this far. Kind of let the crowd back into it, but I think for the most part with that last time out, they kind of regained control of the game. They can knock down this one. There and he goes. One and two for Jonathan Irwin. 40-36, 3.29 to go. See if they can string together some stops. Good defense there. Good hustle by Gavin. Great hustle by Gavin there. Irwin for three, yep. got it, wow, that was huge. Good job there. Jonathan Irwin, we talked about could he be consistent across yeah. four quarters and right now he's proving to be. Clark misses the three. And on that last play it was a great shot That's by sir. Jonathan. No. Spike, no, and a bluffing foul. Tigers getting beat on the boards right yeah. now. And I mentioned that last play. It was a great shot by Jonathan, but Gavin really kind of got it started by getting the turnover on that end and kind of wrestling the ball away and getting down to the other end and setting up Jonathan for three. Spike misses the free throw. Spike sitting with eight. Yeah, and he doesn't look confident in his shot at all. Clark goes back to the bench. The starting five will be on the floor. 
probably for the rest of the way for South Adams. Both teams with four fouls. One to two for Fike. Well, here we go. Can the yeah. Tigers handle the press? Right, that's what got them in a lot of trouble against yep, Woodland. Exactly. You're on your side of the court, no need to rush it here. See now. Good move. Good move. I like oh, it. Oh, that, really like that was huge. Oh, yeah. Eight point lead with 2.12 to go. Besser pulls down the three, Vasquez. They feed Fike and a foul. It'll go against Everett Johnson. Yeah, and I just tell my defense, if you rotate the right way, just be there with your hands up and let him throw up just about whatever he wants to because he's not very consistent in him shooting the ball. So if he's that far away from the rim, keep pushing him out and pushing him out. And just keep your hands straight up. 45-37, two minutes to go. Bluffton holding eight. Second free throw by Fike is good. Seven point lead. Tigers nice get job. it in the King. That's the way Gets to it forward it to Evan. Back to Gavin. Great pass. Finds Everett high off the glass and he's fouled. Big free throws. Need to knock these down. And he does. Yep. Third foul on Arnold. Let's get the second here. Oh, the rim's, rim's not that out. friendly. Red, this rim on this hand is not yeah. friendly to us oh, yeah. in either game. Good job. That, 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 Nicely done. Yep. That all started with Gavin, oh, yeah. though. How huge has he been on defense? Just with his length, his oh, anticipation, he just played so well today. Yeah, really has. 134 to go. Tigers break. They get it back to Evan. 127 to go. And, yep, he's going to get pushed. How many more we got? One more? One more, and we start shooting. Lars. <laughs> Good move. Great oh, move. Oh, just pulled it short. One minute, one minute to go. Good job, good defense. <laughs> South Adams timeout. We'll take a break. At Grable Insurance, their most important job is to make sure you leave with the best coverage you can afford. They want to provide you protection from the unfortunate things that can and often do happen. The cheapest insurance is often not the best. Visit online at grableinsurance.com or stop by the office on Pony Express Run next door to the Leo Post Office and talk to any of the friendly agents that would be happy to help you. Grable Insurance is a proud sponsor of high school athletics. The Bowling Center in Bluffton has adult youth double leagues with one adult and one youth per team or two youth may make a team starting soon. The leagues are 10 weeks long, and everyone plays every frame. With 22 lanes, there's plenty of excitement to go around. 
So stop by to practice or come relax with friends. And don't forget about Friday fun. From 12 noon to 6 p.m., only $1 per game and 50 cent shoe rental in a smoke-free environment. The Bowling Center is located at 1231 South Main Street in Bluffton. Visit bowlbluffton.com. 55 seconds to go. Tigers holding eight. Defend the three and knock down free throws. Oh, yeah. And take care of the basketball. Vasquez will inbound. Besser and Arnold have been the primary three ballers. Here's Besser. This is Arnold. Arnold it. with the drive. Yeah. Offensive rebound. Oh, and a blocking foul on Everett. Should be on the floor. Both teams now with six. Everett's third. If they opt to go for two, I think you just let them. Don't foul them. 44 seconds to go. Okay, and it. one. Ugh. Yeah. Evan second. That a boy, good job. It is a two possession basketball game. And they're gonna foul Bumgardner in the backcourt. So here we go. Front ends of one and one. They killed us in that Woodland contest. Oh, yeah. Bump Garner to the line. Evans got seven. He's one for one from the line. And Clark's going to come in. This is a little offense defense here. Clark knocked down a three earlier. So we'll get him on the floor for some more offense. Oh, boy, Good. Drop. See if they can push it back up to eight here. 47, 40, 31 seconds to go. Nicely done. Yep. It's like a lane violation, I'm assuming. Hands back here. Besser. Wow. And traveled. Wow. Great job. All right. So here we go. They'll get their defense back on the floor. Timeout. I think that's Bluffton's last timeout. We'll take a break. First Bank of Burn. We believe in the American dream of owning a home. Having a space you can call your own. In fact, we've helped people realize that dream for over 125 years. Whether you're looking to buy your first home, refinance an existing loan, or move into something a little bigger, we believe our lending experts have the local knowledge and experience to help make your dream a reality. Apply online at firstbankofburn.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Bluffton Roofing Incorporated prides themselves on developing a long-term relationship with their customers, listening to their needs, and suggesting the proper course of action, be it preventative maintenance, repair, or replacement. Bluffton Roofing and owner James Worth are GAF certified and are certified weather stopper roofing contractors. Bluffton Roofing is fully insured, protecting you and your home. Call 824-3564 or 307-6313. Bluffton Roofing Incorporated. Quality first home improvements 24 seconds to go just to get you caught up we've got to wipe off a point off the tiger scoreboard because of a lane violation yep. so 47 40 and the tigers just threw it away 15 seconds to go vasquez misses everything that's not the guy you want no. shooting the ball if you're nope. South Adams. And like you talked about, defense for offense. I'm not sure you made that substitution there if you wanted to score the ball. Wow. And they're going to foul Bumgardner with seven ticks to go. 
Looks like this game's about in the box. Easy, Hoss. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, Marcus, we need to talk after this game's oh. over. <laughs> All right, now you can say it. Go ahead. Looks like this game's about in the box. All right, I agree. <laughs> Wait, there's two seconds left. No. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're, I think we're good. We're good. Nice defense there. And the Tigers, 47-40. Awesome. I tell you what, that's a big, yeah. that's a big comeback win yeah. coming off that Woodland game, Definitely. Marcus. Yeah. And they weathered some storms tonight. And uh, nice win, nice win for the Tigers. Yeah, I definitely agree. 47, 40, we'll take a timeout, crunch some stats, we'll be right back. Reed's Do It Best Hardware and Gift Shop is so much more than a hardware store. They have a newly expanded housewares department. They carry Melissa and Doug toys, Yankee candles, and Willow Tree collectibles. Think of Reed's Gift Shop year-round for baby gifts, birthday, anniversary, showers, and for those everyday items you need to pick up. Men, you can get your hardware supplies and a gift for the woman in your life all in one stop. Reed's Do It Best Hardware and Gift Shop, open seven days a week on Highway 1 North in Bluffton. We appreciate your business. And they bring the ball down across the timeline. Wingman is open. He dribbles around, finds an open man in the corner, jumps, shoots, scores. Hi, Tim Steffen, Steffen Financial Group. Wish your retirement was as easy as jump, shoot, score. Come to see us at our office at 110 West Cherry Street or call us, please, at 824-8175. Let us work for you to reach your financial goals. Jump. Shoot, score. Let us help you with that. Stefan Financial Group, 824-8175, 110 West Cherry Street, Bluffton, Indiana. Securities offered through Thurston Springer Financial, member FINRA and SIPC. Some insurance products also offered through Thurston Springer. Tim Stefan is a registered associate of Thurston Springer and is doing business as Stefan Financial Group. Stefan Financial Group is independent of Thurston Springer. Welcome back to WellsCountyVoice.com. Tigers win this one 47-40. They will advance to round two of the ACAC Conference Tournament. Coach Benedict coming up. All right, let's get Coach up here. A little mixed up here, Coach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One more. Oh, here we go. One more. There you go. Well, Coach, I tell you what, I'm pretty proud of our boys' effort tonight. Uh, we got up by 10. We weathered a couple of storms. And, uh, you know, coming off the Woodland game, this was, this was a good bounce back. It really was. Uh, proud of our guys, the way they kind of just stuck with it. And again, uh, like you said, had a 10-point lead at half, kind of came out. That thing decimated pretty quickly uh, and then able to kind of regroup, mm -hmm. rega regather themselves, kind of get back into some offensive patience and really kind of taking care of the basketball. We attacked the basket a little better and got to the rim some, got to the free throw line a little bit more. Uh, and then fourth quarter, I thought we did a better job of taking care of the basketball, spacing the floor, moving the basketball and, and taking some time off the clock. But at the same time, uh, you know, one thing I think we got to do, obviously, a much, much better job of is defensive rebound late. Uh, they, we gave up too many second and third yeah. opportunities, uh, which enabled them to kind of keep it interesting for a while. But we had enough free throws to kind of keep them at bay. And uh, uh, again, I'm really proud of the way Evan kind of stayed with yeah. it all night long. He's had two games here in a row where he's really played really well. Uh, all those guys have kind of done a nice job of just settling themselves in and kind of playing their role a little bit uh, and, and just kind of staying with it and grinding it out. Uh, you know, again, there were some times tonight I'm sure it wasn't real pretty, but we just kind of found a way tonight to kind of stay with it. And, again, coming off what you just came off of, uh, you know, having that in the back of your mind and kind of knowing that it's there, uh, but to be able to kind of finish the game off tonight, win by seven, uh, and, and, and hit free throws down the stretch and take care of the ball a little bit better. Uh, you know, is a much, much better effort for our guys. And, and guys coming up with some big plays in big spots. Mm -hmm. You know, Max was kind of quiet in that first half, but he hit mm -hmm. some big buckets in the third and kind of some critical spots. 
Riley Johnston tonight. I know you have talked about Riley on a number of occasions that we need Riley. You know, we need Riley to contribute offensively. Yep. And I thought he looked really nice from the floor tonight shooting. Uh, you know, Riley plays the game at a really good pace offensively. Uh, he needs to play at a different pace defensively sometimes, uh -huh. but he plays at a really good pace on the offensive end of the floor. He's able to get his feet underneath him. He's able to make some big shots. Uh, tonight I thought he was kind of aggressive inside, drew some fouls. And he's a really, really good passer, and he's a really unselfish uh -huh. player, but he's got to be active offensively to kind of make – other guys have to help defensively because he can score. He can yeah. shoot it from the three. He can score it inside. He draws some defense, so it opens some stuff up for other guys. He's a guy that we definitely got to continue to stay with and continue to get better. Uh, and he's done a really, really good job of just kind of sticking with it and kind of fighting through the injury a little bit. I know tonight got hit in the got an ankle a little bit in the first half. He got hit in the back of the head and then his wrist a little bit. Mm -hmm. and it's just kind of like you just got to play through some yeah. of that stuff and fight through it. And uh, But he did a really, really good job for us tonight and hit some big buckets. And Jonathan tonight, you know, he had his couple early threes, but he had some nice penetration drives tonight, which were huge. Yeah, I mean, he, he shot the ball really well in the first half, and then you get that pressure on And I thought he did a really good job of not settling for just staying on the perimeter and staying farther out on the floor. He curl cut. He got into the paint. Once he caught it on the perimeter, he was a little more aggressive driving it to the paint. And he, that one, it enabled him to get to the rim and finish a couple, and it enabled him to get to the free throw line a couple times as well. So, uh, you know. He's got to be. He's another guy that draws a lot of attention, and when he, when he is active and when he is aggressive offensively, it alleviates pressure from other guys. So when guys go to help on him, then that opens up that gap for Evan to really penetrate mm -hmm. downhill. It opens up some stuff for Everett inside to kind of just clean some stuff up around the basket, and then it kind of allows our shooters to kind of spot up on the perimeter and be able to make that extra pass and get a much much better look. So. Um, you know, again, all of them are kind of starting to kind of find their niche a little bit about where they fit, what they're good at, uh, you know, what, what other guys are good at. We've got to do, again, like I said, big, biggest thing tonight I think we've got to take out of this is we've got to rebound the basketball better in, in, in late game situations uh, to kind of be able to keep the other team at bay. Mm -hmm. We handled the, the backcourt pressure much more effectively tonight than obviously we did in that fourth right. quarter at Woodland. Right. Uh, anything differently going on back there tonight? No, not really. I think they were just a little, I mean, you know, it's it's one of those things where, you know, again, we, we challenged them to, you know, do you want to be that team you were for the first three and a half quarters there tonight, or do you want to be that team that, that you finished with? Mm -hmm. And, again, it's like everybody knows the answer to that question. You know, and if, if you don't answer, you don't want to answer that question in the right fashion, then you ought to be painting the B on your chest <laughs> and then row one paying six bucks to get in. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not a, you, know, you don't want to be a competitive athlete if you don't want to be that first group that you were the other night for those first three and a half quarters because that's as well as I think we've played in the two years I've been here, from, you know, from the start of the game all the way up until that four-minute mark. We played some really good basketball on both ends of the floor. Uh, we were efficient offensively. We knocked down shots. We were playing tremendous defense. We had only given up like 25 points for three and a half quarters, and then, it, then the wheels kind of fell off a little bit. But, again, to be able to challenge them like that with only one day to kind of really prepare uh, for today's game, says a lot about their character and a, and a lot about where they've come from and and you know they've they've been a team that struggled a little bit and again now we you know like i said the other night we're we're able to start talking game situations a lot more so they can kind of understand when they're in that environment what do i need to do what's my keys to look for uh how do i respond in that situation how do i stay under control how do i te how do i help a teammate to stay under control and a part of that is one, do your job, be in the right spot at the right time, and then two, trust your teammate to be in the right spot at the right time and trust that you need to deliver the ball in the right spot. And then he's going to be able to go and make that next play out of that. Yeah, and again, I'll say it again. I was really proud of the guys tonight. I mean, I, I, well, coming over this game, I kept thinking to myself, boy, this is a really important game. You know, you hate to pick out one game in the season and say it, it's, it's that much more important than others. But again, just coming off that Willing game, I felt like, boy, we really need to bounce back. Yep. And, and we did, and again, I thought it was kind of good that we worked through some yep. some, some trials there. You know, yep. up by 10, it, it whittled away, but we hung, sure. you know, we hung in there, and, yep. we, and we got it back up to 8 and 9. I just thought it was a nice, nice well-rounded effort. It was. We, we talk a lot to them about, you know, you know bad stuff's going to happen in the course of a 32-minute 32, 32 game. I mean, you're, you know, we're not going to hold the other team scoreless. We're not going to make every shot. We're going to probably turn it over once or twice. How do you respond when those things happen? How do you limit it? to making it just that one possession that's not a good possession and not let it feed into two possessions bad, three possessions bad, not letting it affect the other end of the floor. If you turn it over, you now you got to get a defensive stop. If you gave up an offensive rebound, then now we got to have a great possession on the offensive end to get a great shot. Those are the things that, quite honestly, we weren't able to talk about a year ago. We were, I mean, we were just kind of trying to 
trying to get into the into the competitive part of the game and now we're in the competitive part of the game and now it's like how do you how do you execute how do you extend leads how do you chip into leads without honestly kind of hitting the panic button right. from time to time right. and i think again evan has done a really really good job and kind of stuck with it and he's had some tough games but he's also a, a kid that you know i know you know i knew after the other night's game he was going to come back into practice on monday and he was going to be the hardest working guy we had in practice like he is every day and that's the thing that i really really love about evan is he works hard every single day uh if things don't go his way you know the effort you're going to get out of him day in and day out and then you can kind of work with that and, and just kind of hone in then on the execution part of it and again tonight i thought he played a really really good game yeah he did marcus yep. you got any you got any thoughts great win tonight coach We'll take it. Anytime you can get to the left side, and again, like you said, after coming off what we just came off of and, and so quick turnaround with not a lot of practice time to be able to get back on top, again, have a lead, lose the lead, kind of get the lead back up, and then be able to finish it off. Again, just says a little bit about the character and their and their willingness to stick to it here a little bit. Coach, great win tonight. Thanks for stopping up right, as always. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll see you in round two. All right, Marcus, let's uh, – Let's wrap things up here. Um, again, here's the final stats for the Tigers. Uh, Gavin King finished with two. Everett Johnson with five. Max Coral with five. But those were important five mm -hmm. points in the third quarter. They came in big moments. Evan Bumgarner finished with eight. Riley Johnston, 10. And leading the way tonight, Jonathan Irwin, 17. And I know you and I have talked so many times about needing Jonathan Irwin to produce quarter after quarter yep. after quarter. He got a two, three balls in the first. He got a three ball in the second. He got a three ball in the fourth. But more importantly, he sprinkled in some points yeah. in the paint and at the rim tonight. Yeah. And that's something that we kind of see him shy away, and that's going to the rim. But tonight he was able to balance out shooting that um, long ball and kind of taking it to the rim and giving the defense a different look and how – non-one-dimensional he can be so um yeah i think he's definitely um the player of the game for tonight and yeah absolutely win. jonathan irwin is your wellscountyvoice.com player of the game now let's get you situated in terms of what's next so the tigers win this game they will face the winner of the woodland at heritage game and i think that could be a pretty interesting matchup yeah. if woodland woodland wins that uh -huh. game you get Woodland right back, yeah. you know, and you get an opportunity. It would be at Woodland. Uh -huh. You have to be on, go on the road, but a chance to go on the oh, road, yeah. beat that Woodland team, kind of get that little bit of a revenge factor, yep. and set yourself with an opportunity to win this oh, yeah. conference tournament. And those boys would love a rematch in that game. They would love it. They oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, they would have took it the probably hours after they lost the next one. They would have took a rematch. So that would, be def that would definitely be an interesting game, and I think um, – I, I truly think a different result can actually turn out if there's a rematch in that game. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Jay County probably knocked off Southern Wells tonight. Jay County would have Adams Central. Mm. Now, again, these games are going to be on the 12th, which I think is Friday. The girls are going to play in the consolation round. That game is going to be on Saturday. That will kind of be an afternoon mm -hmm. game, uh, 1 o'clock. Uh, 1 o'clock start for the girls on Saturday. Tigers will be playing on Friday. That game will be at Woodland or Heritage. So we will be at that game mm -hmm. and calling that game for you on Friday night, and then we'll be back to pick up the girls' consolation game on Saturday. So Jonathan Irwin is your WellsCountyVoice.com player of the game. Bluffin splits tonight. Uh, girls lost a game that I thought they had a chance mm -hmm. to win. Yep. They, were, they, they played scrappy. They played tough, and the boys bounced back and pick up a win tonight. And so Tigers will go one and one. Boys move on. Girls will play consolation game. Thank you for joining us here on wellscountyvoice.com. I want to thank Marcus for helping out on the camera tonight and on mic. I want to thank the coaches for stopping up and talking to us. And uh, we will see you later this week.